In this video, I'll be covering question six, part C from the 2021 AP Calculus AB free response, no calculator allowed portion of the test. I cover parts A, B, C, and there is a part D on here, just not pictured right now uh, in their own separate videos. So if you wanna see any of those other solutions, please check out my other videos. So this one's just about part C. Let's take a look at what it's telling us. So it's always nice when they tell us what to do. They're saying use separation of variables to find out what this original equation was. To, uh, and they want the particular solution, which is their fancy way of, we always, when we take antiderivatives, we always find a plus C popping up on us. And when they want us to find the particular solution, that's their way of saying, go find out what the plus C value is. They call this a differential equation. It's what it is. It's just a fancy way of saying the derivative. And so there's our derivative right there. And then this is our initial condition that we'll use to find our plus C value when all said and done. So really, this is just a big integral problem. It's kind of two integrals in one. So we'll start off up here. We get dy dt is equal to 12 minus y over 3. And they, like I said, they tell you what to do, really. They're saying use separation of variables, which means we need to get the y pieces on one side of this equation, and we need the x pieces on the other side. So the first thing I'll do, I call them x's, they're t's, really, right? So first thing I'm going to do is get my t over on this side. So we end up with dy equals 12 minus y over 3 dt and now we need to get that y piece over to the other side and so really kind of remind yourself this is like multiplying by a reciprocal to cancel out that piece on top so to move that over to cancel it out on this side i would multiply by 1 over 12 y and then whatever i do to the other side i got to do on both sides so then from there i end up with 1 over 12 minus y dy equals that would cancel out that's going to leave us with a one third dt on this side and now we dive into the integral portion of this so then we've got an integral here and an integral here that we're going to take care of we'll go ahead and do the one on the left first so looking at this one on the left as soon as you see that it's not just your standard um, adding and subtracting of two variables two pieces or three or four pieces anytime it's more than addition and subtraction and it's not one of your special cases this is really going to require you to do a u substitution um, this is one of those ones if you can identify this form as something you know automatically like you should be kind of looking at this and saying this looks a lot like the integral of 1 over x dx which turns back into the natural log and that's really where this is going to go but you probably want to go through the trouble of just doing the straightforward u sub just to get to that final answer so step one of a u substitution process is we need to choose the u so when I go through my choosing of the U process, I kind of have a priority list that I go through. The first thing I go looking for, if it's available, would be a natural log. If there's no natural log in the problem, then I go looking for what I would call the inside piece as if I was doing a chain rule problem. So something inside a set of parentheses or something inside a, a, a trig function, something that's inside something else. The third thing, if that's not there, is I go looking for the bottom of a fraction. So working our way through our priority list, looking at this problem, I don't have a natural log, so that's not going to be my u. I don't have an inside piece, so that's not going to be my u. So my third option is the bottom of a fraction, and so that's what I would grab here. So on this one, u is going to equal 12 minus y. Then step two of your use substitution process is now to take the derivative of that so you would get du and because we're talking y's you'd get du dy you always want to use this differential notation when you're doing u substitution problems taking the derivative of the right side the derivative of 12 would go away the derivative of negative y following our power rule would just be negative one then step three of the process is you want to solve that little equation that you just had there to get dy by itself. So when we're doing this, we need to change the whole language of this problem over to talking the language of u, and that includes changing that dy into a du. So I will start by solving this to get dy by itself. So I'll multiply both sides by dy. I get du equals negative one dy. 
And again, I want to get y, dy by itself, so I'm going to divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and I get, technically this would be, you know, negative 1 du when you're dividing by a negative equals dy. So now I'm ready to go do my substitution. I'm going to substitute that in for dy, and I'm going to substitute u in for that information. So then working our way through this thing left to right, it's either one of the pieces we substitute in for, or it gets left alone for the time being. So we would have the antiderivative of 1 over, and now all that stuff on bottom is u, and then dy is now going to be negative 1 du. And then we'll kind of leave this other piece alone for the time being. It's better just take down one at a time, right? So looking at this problem now, this now is something we should hopefully be able to take the antiderivative of. And what we can see is that what this is, is that special case that I was talking about earlier. So this is 1 over u, 1 over x. That's going to be the natural log. So we've got a negative 1. That constant is still going to be out in front. This is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And when we're doing this separation of variables method, when you've got two integrals, you only want to have 1 plus c for your problem. And it is always going to be better to kind of leave your plus c over here on the right-hand side. So we're not going to have a plus c on this one. We're going to have one giant plus c for the whole problem so we're just going to leave it like that for the time being and then that's equal to and now we can go over here and do the antiderivative of this this is a straightforward one to do this is just going to be our power rule so a number by itself gains a letter back so this would be one third t and now we put that plus c over on this side from here, remember that when you're doing u substitution, you didn't really care about u, you cared about what u was, so you want to plug that u back in. So we get negative 1 natural log of the absolute value of 12 minus y equals 1 third t plus c. And then as we go through this process, we want to solve this equation now to get y by itself. So we just start moving everything away. When you want to get rid of a natural log, the first thing you got to do is isolate that natural log. Get it by itself. So I'm going to divide everything over here by negative 1. I end up with the natural log of 12 minus y equals negative 1 third t. And when you're doing work with the c, like you really don't have to stress yourself out on what's going on with that as far as positives or negatives, because the c is going to work out at the end anyway. So I would just call that plus c still. To cancel out a natural log, remember e and natural log are inverses of each other. When I do e to the natural log, they cancel out, and whatever is in that parentheses there just drops straight down. So to cancel out our natural log here, we ruled e both sides. So e to this equals e to that. The e and the natural log cancel out here. We have 12 minus y equals, and then on this side we have e to the negative one-third t plus c. When we keep working on this right now, this is where things get a little funky. This is where we get some laws of exponents coming into play. So we've got two things being added up in this exponent on the e. So remember if I have like e to the x, e to the fifth, so like e to the fifth times e to the seventh, that you, when you've got like terms, you end up adding those exponents, right? So what we've got going on on the right-hand side is we technically have this setup and we need to bring it back to this setup. So we'd end up with the absolute value of 12 minus y equals, and then this would be e to the negative one-third t times e to the c. What they want us to do now is kind of think about this as being its own new little variable. Like we said, like when we divided by c by negative 1, e to the c is again just going to be a constant. It's no longer being added, though. It's being multiplied. So the next move is to kind of pull that to the front, and I would just call that a big C up in front times e to the negative 1 third t. Next move is, because the natural log had to have a positive value in it, we can really drop these absolute value bars now to get to the next stage. Because you can't do algebra with absolute value bars. And because we were already taking the natural log of it, we know that whatever went in there was going to end up being a 
positive in the end anyways because we would absolute value it. So we're allowed to drop those absolute value bars. And then we're going to continue down this path. We would now move the 12 over. So minus 12, minus 12. We get negative y equals c e to the negative one third t minus 12. And then the last move on this is you would go ahead and just divide by negative 1, divide each chunk over here by negative 1. And we'll go ahead and pull this math up to the side here. You know, it's big old long algebra, but you got to take it step by step and don't drop any steps. You move too fast and you end up dropping a negative. So negative y divided by negative 1, that was going to be our y on this side. Again, c divided by negative 1, that's still going to be c. Whatever c ends up coming out as, it doesn't, it's, it's a constant in its own. So we kind of just get to leave that alone. And then we end up out of here with a negative 12 divided by negative 1 is going to give us a positive 12. So this is what they refer to as the general solution when we still have that c value in there. And this problem wanted us to find the particular solution. So we have a point on the graph. They're telling us when we plug in zero, the answer to all of that math needs to equal zero. So what you do is you would say zero, the answer has to equal whatever I get when I plug zero into this equation. And now we're going to solve that to get C by itself. So we go ahead and we would minus the 12 over, minus the 12 over. We get, oops, not zero. Zero minus 12 is going to get us negative 12. This piece here, remember, anything to the zero power is always 1. So if we have e to the zero, that equals 1. And so what we're going to get out of there is c times 1, which is just going to leave us with c. So we get out our final value for our c, that constant that we were trying to find. And then you get your particular solution. You're going to get your final answer by plugging that c value back into your general solution up here. So our final answer, y is going to equal, the c value is negative 12, e to the negative 1 third t plus 12. And then if you wanted to, you could call that a of t because they like to call it a of t, but they told us in the language of the problem that y and a of t are the same thing. So we end up getting that out as our final answer. So a lot of algebra here, a lot to keep track of, some laws of exponents, some special case antiderivatives, but in the end, we get out our particular solution right there. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe, and also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.